Greetings gang, C.S. Bernard here for another installment of Geeky News, and this time I'd like to bring you the classic game from 2009, Batman Arkham Asylum. Whereas most people think I should be talking about Arkham City, the sequel scheduled to come out in October, I'd rather go ahead and cover this game in great detail from, you know, those that didn't play it beforehand, wondering what the hell you were doing with your spare time, and for those who did play it but haven't, you know, kept up with the details of it ever since. After all, might need a refresher course. Still, I'd also like to just, you know, address the game as being as awesome as it is. This was a game that really boosted the superhero genre in video gaming since most other games before it were always failures and very poorly received. This game, of course, brings us Batman in all his, you know, Dark Knight glory. Voiced by Kevin Conroy, the veteran voice actor that, you know, really brought the character to life in the Batman animated series back in the 1990s. As we all know, a billionaire uh, heir that was forced to watch his parents die in a very violent street mugging, Batman dedicated his life to straightening up Gotham City and trying to make the world a better place in general. A very tall order when you consider his rogues gallery filled with guys like the Joker, an insane megalomaniac with all sorts of designs on just mass murder and mayhem in all directions. For him, life is one big joke and death is the punchline. Despite that, he's quite the charmer, amazingly, as we all know, since he has a foxy henchwinch by the name of Harley, Harley Quinn, a.k.a. Harley Quinn, Harleen Quinzel. A former psychotherapist assigned to cure the Joker, she wound up you know, losing her sanity to his little mind games and decided that his way of thinking was the best way of thinking. And, of course, she's hopelessly in love with him. On the same scale of former you know, psychotherapists who you know, lost their minds is, of course, Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. the Scarecrow. A man obsessed with fears and phobias and the power it could bring, he wound up experimenting on people in ways that you know, really should never have been done with all sorts of fear toxins that reach deep into the human mind and unlock all the deepest, darkest secrets and fears that could put people into downright catas catatonic states, if not outright kill them through heart attacks and you know, attempts to flee their uh, imaginary uh, pursuers. In the same vein there of experiments and the like, there's Bane, the otherwise nameless mercenary who was so hardcore that he was born into prison, forced into military experiments that gave him super strength untold, and of course he used this strength to break Batman's back. Enough said. Also, another experiment gone wrong is Pamela Isley, a.k.a. Poison Ivy. A woman mutated through various experiments, she wound up losing her own humanity in favor of becoming more in touch with nature. Blood replaced with chlorophyll, this woman is one bad nightmare for anybody that ever you know, thought of hurting a flower. Using her control over plants and pheromones that gave her control over men, she's a dangerously psychotic woman that you know, will stop at nothing to either you know, prune back a large portion of humanity, if not extinct it altogether. Yikes. On lower level, lower levels of thinking anyway, criminals, you also have Waylon Jones, a.k.a. Killer Croc, a man born with a very, you know, bizarre skin disorder who, you know, of course, suffered a lot of heckling and, you know, jeering throughout his childhood and eventually wound up becoming a circus performer. Croc, you know, eventually lost his own mind, becoming nothing more than a feral, brutish beast, you know, capitalizing on the very nature of his name. Down to the point of he's even a cannibal. Also, double yikes. And, of course, on the very lower tiers of Batman supervillains is, of course, Victor Zaz, a.k.a. simply Mr. Zaz. A psychotic serial killer that kills purely for the enjoyment of it. He's noted for, of course, having scarified his whole body with tally marks all over for every single person he's ever killed. Unpredictable, unpredictable and dangerous, this is one guy you don't turn loose with sharp objects. On the whole, the game drops you into the very nature of Arkham Asylum, one of the most notorious and insane asylums in all of fiction, if not comic books in general. It's, of course, a very gothic institution, you know, filled with a very menacing air, and, of course, set in nighttime, the most optimum time to you know, give it its darkest and you know, most sinister nature. On the whole, though, the institution is trying to be improved by the new warden there, Quincy Sharp, who's up security, improved uh, security measures in general, and has promised to try to reduce crime in the city and use this as an advantage in trying to get elected mayor in the upcoming elections. Naturally, though, things go to hell in a handbasket when Batman brings back the Joker, 
who immediately uses a preset plot to secure control of the security system for himself and turns all the criminals loose, both super criminal and otherwise. It's up to you as Batman in the game to round up all the criminals and lock up the supervillains once again. And of course, you know, trying to stop the Joker and whatever his deranged plot is. To do so, you're given two flavors of combat. One is combat you know, as is, you know, where you simply use uh, attack, counter, and evade maneuvers to you know, sub uh, do and take down whole hordes of thugs at will. But when they get heavily armed and come at you with assault rifles and machine guns and the, and the like, you have to go ahead and become more of a predator type combat style, where you sneak into the shadows and attack from above and behind corners and the like, taking out thugs as they go by, picking them off one by one in you know, an attempt to get through to other levels of the island. Well, as you take them down, you silently do them, go around, do rinse, lather, rinse, repeat until you bring down a whole world of hurt and all the different criminals that have escaped. And if that's not up to your liking, you also have all the different little gadgets that Batman's known for, especially his vaunted Batarangs, which come in different flavors, of course, such as Standard, Sonic, and uh, Remote Control. Different types, of course, being used for different situations. And if that's not enough, you also have the advantage of Batman's grappling hooks, zip lines, and of course, cape, which can be used as a hang glider to go ahead and deliver an attack from above, taking out opponents before long before they can see you. And if you're needing to get more serious, Batman carries an explosive gel in his utility belt, which he can spray on and use both to destroy important objects, or to go ahead and subdue people with concussive blasts. And if you need something more delicate, you also have the cryptographic sequencer, which allows you to break into the security system and override different parts of the island's uh, locked up areas as you need them to get through to different areas that they try to keep you out of. And if that's not enough, you also have the benefit of detective mode, a built-in device in Batman's cowl that allows him to see enemies before they can get near him, anticipate who is the more dangerous threat, and of course uh, detect booby traps before they can get you. And even still, if that's not enough, you also have the benefit of Batman having constructed a remote bat cave inside the island's catacombs and sewer system where you can retreat to regroup, replan your strategy, and of course upgrade your weapons as you need them. Of course, you'll need these weapons to take down different threats, such as Victor Zaz taking hostages at will across the island. The Scarecrow constantly blasting you with different doses of fear toxin, sending you on trippy, otherworldly uh, views of the island inside your own head. And, of course, Edward Nigma, a.k.a. the Riddler, who's decided to challenge you mentally by trying to hide all sorts of little hidden objects all across the island, ranging from simple Riddler trophies such as this to all sorts of things such as memorabilia and devices that you know, belong to other super criminals, things like Penguin's umbrellas or Catwoman's gloves and goggles. And on top of that, there's also the notorious uh, invisible ink question marks he's hidden in plain sight that you'll need detective mode to discover. At large, though, the story revolves around the fact that the Joker has discovered a new and improved version of the Venom compound that gives Bane all of super strength. Called Titan, it mutates any regular Joe into a you know, deranged, over-muscled thug that can you know, destroy at will with all sorts of extra strength uh, to back it up. The Joker intends to use the compound to infect his whole army of thugs and turn them loose on Gotham, you know, bringing madness untold, as he says himself. It's up to you, then, as Batman, to fight Killer Croc and everyone else that gets in your way, including Poison Ivy's you know, evil uh, mutated plants all across the island, to try to make a cure and, of course, come up with a way to defeat the Joker himself. After subduing all the rest of the super criminals, you come to a showdown with the Joker himself, who in a last-ditch effort injects himself with the Titan compound and challenges you to a last man, showdown, uh, last man showdown. Naturally, Batman isn't scared at all, and when it comes down to mano a mano, who wins? Batman, bitch! Who did you expect? <laughs> oh, well, it was a great game, and every conceivable way. I mean, it has all the classic voice actors from the series. Aside from Kevin Conroy, you have Mark Hamill as the Joker and Arlene Sorkin as Harley Quinn. It's loaded with all sorts of references to the comic books and all sorts of other little things throughout the history of the, both the books and other little things here and there. 
once uh, you've uh, uncovered all the Riddler trophies and dispatched all the thugs, everything should be right as rain. Well, except for a few little things you have to discover as you go along. Number one, you find out that Quincy Sharp isn't quite all there and probably has more sinister motives for all of his attempts to becoming mayor. Unfortunately, he manages to get off the island before you can confront him about it, and he's laid low ever since, of course pushing his mayoral campaign where he can. And of course, being Batman, he can't necessarily you know, just blab all this to the public, but he's been keeping an eye on him ever since, especially for the fact that he's asked for a new administrator to take over the Arkham facilities, a Dr. Hugo Strange. Most people in the comic book knowing uh, knowledge of things would know what all that's about, but you know, for you guys out there, eh, needless to say, don't trust the dude with the last name of Strange. It's really... Aside from this, you also discover that uh, a new and improved Arkham inst inst installation has been approved and, well, it's already underway. Okay, so sure, Sharp's not really all there and the new guy Strange is a rather you know, mysterious figure, but you know things should be looking up. I mean, you've locked up all the super criminals and despite the island getting heavily trashed in the you know, one-man war against them, Things should be looking up, right? I mean, they'll be locked up in a new and improved facility. I mean, it can't get too much worse, can it? Can it? Oh, shit. Well, that's a look back at Arkham Asylum. Uh, be with me next time as we brave the dangerous streets of Arkham City. C.S. Bernard for Geeky News, signing off.